Hey, order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So first today, let's talk about the news that police are treating an attack at a London underground station as a terrorist incident. A man carrying a knife was reported to have screamed, this is for Syria, as he injured three men at Leytonstone Station in East London, making it potentially the first terrorist attack on British soil since the murder of Fusilier Lee Rigby in 2013. Mobile phone footage shows police officers wrestling with a man after he'd been tasered. He was later arrested and remains in custody. The Metropolitan Police said one man suffered serious knife injuries but wasn't thought to be in a life-threatening condition, while two other victims received minor injuries. While well, the Work and Pension Secretary, Ian Duncan-Smith, has this morning called the attack an abomination. And we can speak now to the local MP, John Cryer, who is outside Leytonstone Station. John Cryer, your response. Well, it's an appalling attack, I mean, and, it's, and it's frightening. It's very frightening for local people. I've been talking to some of the local businesses uh, this morning, and obviously they're all very worried about it now. What, what the background is, what the motivation is, I don't think it'd be particularly helpful to speculate at the moment. Um, so I'd rather not do that. Um, but when something like this happens in your own area, it's just not something people expect. Leightonston is... Uh, He's a fairly peaceful area, people live together, a lot of communities live together extremely peacefully and harmoniously. That's one of the great things about this area. As you say, people are going to be scared and understandably so. So what is your message to your constituents as, as they wake up to this news? Well, I think the message is that we, we carry on as normal, that we don't allow this sort of barbaric behaviour to change our lives. Um, and I think that that's the important thing. And I think people will, will continue. It's not, I mean, I'm not saying people will be bl bl blasé about it. People won't. People are very concerned. Um, but I don't think people will allow this to change the way they live their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the impression I've had from the people I've been talking to uh, this morning. Now, this has happened just days after Parliament voted for airstrikes in Syria. People are bound rightly or wrongly, to draw a link between the two. What say you? Well, I was, I was opposed to the airstrikes in Syria. I voted against the airstrikes in Syria. I think that it will prove to be quite a, a major mistake. I'm not convinced that this will be connected to the airstrikes in Syria. I don't think there'll be a connection. Well, well, I just don't know at the moment, so we can only speculate. But uh, there doesn't seem to be immediately evidence that there is a direct link. But we have to find out what the background is. The police are investigating. I've been in contact with the police this morning, but I think it would be dangerous to say this is a direct consequence of airstrikes on Syria. However, I feel about the airstrikes in Syria. And as I say, I am a fairly major critic of the government's activities. John Cryer there at Leytonstone Station, thank you. Well, this comes after the so-called Islamic State claimed a husband and wife who massacred 14 people in Southern California this week were supporters of the terrorist group. So is this just the latest sign that the West faces a new type of threat? Well, we're joined now by the security expert, Will Geddes. At the moment, it looks like a lone wolf. No accomplices, no organisation in any major way behind it. Is that how you read it? Yeah, I think pretty much so. It's, um, it's incredibly difficult to say right now. And again, it's, uh, it's dangerous to speculate too much until obviously the police have undertaken their investigations to determine how this individual was motivated, uh, under what particular umbrella that might have been, whether it was a loan, whether it was a self-radicalisation process, or whether it was in connection with larger cells or groups. So it's difficult to say. In some way, unfortunately, we've been expecting an attack because we've had the Paris attacks, we've had uh, the attacks in Southern California, and there had been warnings about it, and the terror threat is still extremely high. So we shouldn't be that surprised. No, I don't think we are, and I think we're accepting the fact that, unfortunately, we are at a very high risk level in terms of these types of attacks. And I think this is, precedes, obviously, the Syrian uh, bombing agreements in terms of the fact that there were seven major significant plots which were foiled this year. So 
you know, we have always been on the radar. It's just down to the capability of the individuals. And sadly, certainly in the wake of this most recent incident here in London, you know, maybe it is going to be on the platform of lone wolves more than anything else. Do you think that's the case? Because that is the pattern <coughs> most recently, um, obviously not before, that that might be what continues in, unfortunately, capitals uh, across Europe. Well, I think we have to be pragmatic and accept that. I think ultimately we uh, will know that the individuals that are planning as cells have a far, far, far higher chances of detection. So individuals working on their own, whether it be in a very specific conceptual sort of agenda and, and motivation, or whether it be an individual that is simply aligned to the ideologies of Daesh, uh, is again going to just add to the spectrum of types of threats. Right. I mean, Nick, what, what do you think will be the reaction? We've had some political reaction um, already, and along the lines of John Cryer saying, stay vigilant, don't be blasé, life carries on as normal. Well, that was an incredibly important contribution from John Cryer that you had there, because he's not just the local Labour MP, he's the chairman of the Parliamentary Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And in that capacity, Jeremy Corbyn invites him to attend the Shadow Cabinet. He voted against the airstrikes in Syria, uh, and he's being held up by uh, the Corbyn people as a sign of how the majority opinion in the Labour Party is against the airstrikes. But John Cryer was absolutely clear, saying it would be dangerous to say uh, that this attack in Leytonstone is in any way linked to the vote in Parliament and the reason why that is significant is that there will be some people and we are indeed already seeing some people on Twitter mm. saying that this attack in Leytonstone is as a result of that vote well the chairman of the PLP who voted against the airstrikes says it would be dangerous to make that conclusion but as Nick has said people will make those links and they'll continue to do so particularly in the light of Michael Fallon saying the the bombing campaign is intensifying in Syria and there are likely to be civilian casualties they may well do so, but what strikes me about this attack, awful and horrible as it is, of course, for everybody involved, is it's a rather pathetic little attack. Very happily, the uh, victim, as we understand it, is not going to uh, die as a result of this attack. What strikes me is, were we in America and were the people who are prone to do these things able to get their hands on guns, this would have been a mass casualty or could well have been a mass casualty attack. As it was, we're left with somebody just randomly stabbing and not really getting anywhere. Do you think people are ready for how long this campaign, our campaign in Syria, is going to go on for? And we're going to live in the shadow, indirectly or directly, uh, of a terrorist threat? Well, I don't know whether people are ready for not just Syria, but maybe five years' worth of security being one of the top three issues in the country. If you look at the uh, issues index, the issues which are most salient to voters in recent years, it's been the usual economy, NHS, immigration to a certain extent. And I wonder whether by the time of the next election, because of this fairly consistent terror threat, security is either number one, two or three. We've got the investigatory powers bill going mm -hmm. through Parliament at the moment. And I think uh, that kind of legislation, the presence of the terror threat, the kind of thing that is, that is on the evening news night after night over five years will change what we consider to be the most salient issues in British politics. Right, and, and on that, really, from a security point of view, there have been reports that one of the Paris attackers had travelled to Britain earlier this year, and the chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee, Labour MP Keith Vass, said it is a real worry if people are able to get through our borders uh, without being detected. How worried are you by those reports? Well, I think we're playing a little bit of a catch-up game. I think, unfortunately, we've depreciated uh, many of our capabilities in terms of both the border force, in terms of our metropolitan police and police agencies across uh, the United States, Kingdom. And although there have been some very positive gestures by the government in terms of boosting numbers within the security services, for example, you know, you're still looking at approximately 18 months before those 1,900 new heads within GCHQ and the security services will be actually operationally able to fulfil their missions. Right. And, and briefly on the police numbers then, of course, which was a very controversial issue in terms of the spending review, um, that didn't happen. The cuts that people feared the government will be relieved they didn't make those cuts. And Ian Duncan-Smith, in condemning this attack as, a, as, a, as an abomination, made that exact point, saying we kept those police numbers and they'll be really important in tackling the terrorist threat. Thank you. I've been getting away with it all.